to do that. But we will have uh, the report from Amateur Radio Newsline, Josh. Excellent. So I think I screwed something up, possibly. I think the, the stream got a little messed up here. Let me restart, refresh my screen for a second and see how badly we did things, or I did things. <laughs> One four-day weekend. Watch out. Yeah, I know, yeah. right? Exactly. Uh, let's see. Am I there? Oh, good. Okay. So we're we're there, but I, I, I clipped the beginning a little bit, so I may have to do some work to make it all work. But anyway, hey, hopefully you guys are seeing us now. You might have missed some of the openings, but we got Joe. He's going to talk about a kit. Gordo's back with some shorts. Don had a great hat. You want to hold that hat up again? <laughs> yeah, I'll put that back on. There you go. That's fine. Fourth of July, you got to celebrate. All right, happy Fourth of July, everybody. So, uh, okay, now Amanda, how you doing? I'll fix all this in post. So sorry about that, guys. I am fantastic. <laughs> I'm just like that's the only thing Don could bring to the table was the hat. Okay, it's okay, Don. <laughs> I do what I can with what I got. Okay. Indeed. Oh, uh, doing fabulous here. Had a great Fourth, by the way. Great uh, field day. Not as active as I would have liked to been. Uh, we're going to recap some of our activities, and I also got a great, great Hoda and those enthusiasts joining us tonight. KG two MM. Stay tuned because Mike, or otherwise known as the other Mike, is going to tell us all about some of his Hoda activities. Excellent. So, and we'll be following chat. Just add us and highlight our name. We'll 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 cap capture your questions and we'll send them to whoever they need to be sent to. So with that, I think we go back to Gordo. Take it away, Gordo. All right. Well, thanks, Amanda. And yes, uh, field day, I think, for uh, everyone was a blast. Um, started out a little slow out here on the West Coast on 20 meters. I'm but after a while, after a while, it really began to pick up. <clears throat> and of course, uh, field day night was uh, full of surprises. Well, what was surprising for us at our field day at an emergency operations center um, a yard, a, a huge yard, was uh, one particular demo, and I thought we would tune into it. And that demo that drew the most uh, activity of people watching was 248 miles away, speeding at 17,500 miles per hour, and of course, that is the International Space Station. It's as bright almost as the moon or Venus. It's number three in brightness for the ISS. And uh, with seven to 12 people up there, many of them are ham operators. And the International Space Station uh, plays an important part uh, in communications in that uh, many times uh, kids will, through their school, work through the base station, uh, space station and talk directly to the astronauts. Here, one of the schools are asking the astronauts, what's it like uh, for daytime and nighttime up there in space? Right, and, uh, we, uh, we have constant lighting, so the only time you really notice sunrise and sunset is if you happen to be looking out a window. In our crew quarters, we can keep them as dark or as light as we like. So we try to have lights on during the day and turn the lights off at night so we get a sense of, uh, of a normal day. <laughs> so you never know what's going to happen at uh, field day. And this time, field day was all set to tune in the crossband repeater. Now, the crossband is uh, the output from the space station is 437-800. Uh, the input, don't even think about the input on field day in that uh, there were so many folks trying, it was nothing more than a heterodyne, although our particular station did get, I think, one or two syllables in edgewise. Uh, the uplink to the space station is 145.990 with a 67 hertz. Well, we had this tuned in, and one of the operators said, oh, we're all set to receive it. And I go, no, you're not going to hear the space station for about half the pass on that frequency. And he took out his uh, man. He says, no, it's right there. And I said, remember, it's traveling 17,000 miles per hour, Doppler shift. So if you're going to tune in the International Space Station and you want to compensate for Doppler shift, you must tune in 437-810 as it's coming up. And once it's getting higher and higher, go to 437-805 when it's um, equidistant overhead, 437-800. And then... Doppler shift backwards, 437.795 and 437.790. 
Well, you can get all of the details of the International Space Station from AMSAT, but uh, Rosalie, uh, formerly with the American Radio Relay League, Rosalie K1STO, says um, you really need to get it at ARISS, Amateur Radio International Space Station.org, because we have all of the information there. Well, to see when we're going to have a suitable pass, you want to go to heavens hyphen above and uh, just type that into your search engine. It'll pop up like this, but get this one, the short one, heavens hyphen above. Uh, once you've uh, brought that in, um, it's going to come up with visible passes. Well, okay. Um, that's all right. And the visible passes means that you've got to input your information if this is the first time you've ever done it. So you do that on the login and it will stick forever after you log in and stay logged in. Um, <clears throat> you don't have to repeat all the information. It's already there. Just hit the login button and uh, presto. So we've logged in my location rather than unknown. And once we do that, it says, okay, what do you want to look at? And that's the ISS, International Space Station. And it says, okay, we're going to give you visible only, which means uh, early morning, uh, twilight, as well as uh, evening sunset. No, the space station works all the time. It doesn't require on uh, early morning or late in the afternoon. So instead of doing visual only, click the all button. And once you've done the all button, you're going to get all of the passes for the day. Now, remember the times they give you are local time to where you're located, not universal time. So when you see 0730, that means 730 in the morning, your time, your local time. Don't try and add or subtract five or eight hours or whatever. And to be able to uh, get a good shot at it and working with a handheld or whatever type radio crossband you have, you want a, a good elevated pass, 30 or 40 degrees will do fine. Um, once you have all that information, uh, you can then go on Heavens Above and click to see where it is. And there it is down off of Africa. And um, <clears throat> do a, a few more clicks. And um, we'll see it uh, sort of headed hopefully in our direction out here. And then Heavens Above allow you to go into another uh, clickable item and see where it is on a graphic like this. Yeah, that one's a little weird. That'd be good in the middle of the night. So I like to go to ground track and look at ground track. Well, we'll show you ground track in a second. But ground track is going to give you uh, an optical view of where that space station is coming up, going overhead and down. Now, you don't need a fancy antenna to hear the International Space Station. In fact, what everybody most impressed was at field day, they could hear it on a handheld with a rubber duck after they added 5 or 10 kilohertz as the station was coming up. Three element beam just intensifies your signal. And if you're trying to work it uh, through the crossband repeater, don't forget you need the uh, 67 hertz tone and you aim that and you rotate it back and forth and back and forth because uh, in a moment we're going to tell you about the space station's antenna. Well, there it is, the ground track. And the ground track for this particular pass <clears throat> shows that it's going to go nearly overhead, which in some cases is good, but if you have just a single vertical uh, antenna, collinear, the going overhead is not going to be great when it's right overhead because that's where the donut hole is and you're not going to hear too much. But this gives you a great graphic. But uh, nonetheless, this is a better graphic. And the reason is, is the further it is from uh, the ocean uh, out to sea where there's no one else competing, the better chance you're going to hear your own signal coming back. And here's what your signal sounds like. This was tuned five kilohertz off, so it's a little bit garbled. But here you go. So you got to go quick because a lot of other stations are wanting to work it. And to be polite, don't hog the pass. In other words, make one or two contacts and then go next 
and let someone else go ahead and work it because this is on FM and it'd be a major double. Now we're taking a look and seeing where the space station is. It looks like it's going to be right off the coast of uh, California. Now, regarding the antennas, uh, the VHF, UHF antennas aboard the ISS are linear, but the polarization angle rotates as the signal goes through the different parts of the atmosphere and the ionosphere. Remember, they're above the D layer, the E layer, and they're amongst the F1 and F2 layers, so that signal is going to uh, slowly roll. Well, in general, circular polarization, either right or left hand, is better off than just uh, vertical or horizontal because the uh, circular polarization will pick up both linear uh, polarization uh, regardless of rotation angle. But the trade-off is if you have one of those corkscrew antennas, you've got aimed at right there at the space station because you're down 3 dB over if you had either a vertical or a horizontal antenna. And um, you just aim it up there in the direction of the space station. And uh, when you are operating crossband, you are going to hear your own signal come back, your voice with just a very slight delay. But the most important thing is to hear the space station. And that's the big thing that happened at Darfield Day. People just went nuts with a handheld going, oh my God, I'm actually tuned into the space station. And again, Tune 10 kilohertz high, 437.810. And then as it's right uh, overhead or equidistant, 437.800. And then start tuning in five kilohertz steps. Big deal was everybody had their steps wrong. So it was not uh, easy for them just to go click, click, click and get to it. So welcome to what I thought was one of the most exciting parts of field day, and that was hearing the International Space Station, uh, hearing the crossband repeat on uh, 437-800 and all the thousands of other hams along the West Coast trying to access it at the same time. But at least we got two words in edgewise. So that's my story, and we hope everybody has a great week ahead. Amanda, back to you. Well, thank you, Gordo. And uh, that then earned you guys an extra 100 points for field day, did it not? Yes. Where's yes, the, yes, yes, yes. Where's the bell or the, the train horn? The train oh, whistle. Oh, train horn. Hold on. <laughs> 100 yeah, points. There we go. 100 points. <laughs> there you go. That train whistle is always on my desk, by the way. So beware. All right. Thanks, Gordo. Appreciate that. Do we have any um, questions? Have... Oh, you know what? I did not see any questions. I, I saw a couple. I'll mention did you? Uh, one. Yeah, I was it, too busy actually chatting. I'm sorry. Yeah, G Gordo, there's a couple of questions where people are talking about antennas. If they're, if they're interested in getting started, uh, what would you recommend they do as far as putting together uh, an antenna to do something like talk to the crossband repeat on the ISS? Um, certainly the dual band three element beams by Arrow having both 440 as well as two meters, uh, as well as the elk antenna, log periodic. These are handheld antennas, uh, quite small, uh, very workable with a handheld. So I would first start off there, but believe it or not, just a good long dual band rubber duck antenna on a handheld, they're gonna hear the International Space Station well, but they've gotta keep moving it to compensate for the uh, shift in polarization and uh, for those wishing to actually hear their own signal coming through and working other stations, then a good three element uh, antenna and maybe 20 watts of power is what it's gonna take to, to get through on two meters coming back on 440. You know, I actually saw, a, I wanna say a YouTube video, I forget who it was that presented, it was years ago, but he had one of those long, like 13 inch MFJ whips, and he was actually holding it away from um, a the hood of a car and using that as a reflector to <laughs> kind of enhance the signal. Oh, I, yeah. I, know, I swear I saw that. Yeah, we've done that on field day before. Yeah. Yep. All right. And uh, I, I let me let me clarify one thing, though. Um, people were talking about receiving SSTV from ISS. So that would be completely different. You're just receiving at that point in time. So you're just wanting one antenna to follow their signal so that you can uh, keep uh, downloading the SSTV awesome cards that they send out and things like that. So a little bit different just receiving on that. 
Go and, ahead, Gordo. That's that's correct, Amanda. And for the SSTV, it's either going to be on 145 800 two meters or the packet channel 145.825. So remember, the 437 crossband is for FM crossband, but for hearing the astronauts talking to schools or slow scan television, uh, 145 800 is the place to be, FM. Absolutely. And um, <clears throat> I guess one of the astronauts has been out there kind of crazy, giving out some uh, contacts on their 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 uh, space station um, repeater. So some people have really, I saw something on Facebook. I don't have the, the finalized answers on that, but it was pretty interesting. All right, let's get to my guest. We've got Mike Robinson with us, otherwise known as the other Mike. <laughs> Hi, Mike. <laughs> this is KG2MM. Um, previously known as Kilo Delta 2 Sierra X-ray Delta. If you anyone has him in your logs, you might look at both if you're trying to see if you've worked them before. How you doing tonight, Mike? Uh, good evening, Amanda. How else? How you doing? And uh, glad to be on here tonight. Oh, fantastic! We're doing great. Um, so you know, I we've been friends for a long time. We we started working each other on HF years ago. It seems like now, and. Uh, We've, we've exchanged QSL cards, but then we became friends on Facebook and I got to follow some of the other things that you do. And that's where you really piqued my interest in watching you go out and do all these crazy potas and stuff. And so uh, that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, I First, I wanted to talk about, before we show this clip, I wanted you to give firsthand what happened during your last, one of your last POTA activations, or you were helping somebody else give a POTA activation, and they wrote up a whole thing about you and got you nominated. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I had a buddy of mine that's local to me here in Jacksonville, Florida. His name is Mike as well, uh, <laughs> KK4UQP. And um, it was a surprise. I didn't know. Uh, and, and, to find out while doing another POTA, I was in South Carolina and uh, the POTA founder, Jason Johnston, uh, uh, hunted me down and, and told me, hey, I sent you an email, you know, um, make sure you check it out. And it was a, a, sh a shock to me when I did finally uh, look at it. And uh, he wrote a big, a big uh, article on how I helped him uh, get his first POTA activation under his belt and uh, work some parks. That's amazing. And I think that's kind of what it's all about is, uh, I mean, I hear a lot of POTAs to POTAs all the time. So you guys always support each other and help each other get contacts, but actually being hands on that it's fantastic. So Josh, if you don't mind playing the clip real quick, like. November 2, Bravo Tango Delta. Awesome. So you're there coaching them the whole time? Yes. Okay. So um, what got you into amateur radio? Uh, well, let's see. Going back, we'll go back in time. Um, I started off with CB, as a lot of people probably have, uh, cool. back in the early 90s. Um, I then uh, ventured on to trying to get my ham license. Uh, that was back when uh, the code was still in effect. And I couldn't grasp the code. Um, I was in my teenage years and I just tried and tried and I couldn't get, get the cold. Uh, so I put it to the side, uh, got a job at Radio Shack. Then I started uh, working in the commercial side with uh, some Motorola dealers in uh, New York City, uh, installing repeaters and doing mobile installations. So that's what kept me in the communications realm um, all these years. Then my career took off with uh, um, in the police department uh, and, uh, and I put everything on hold and, and finished my career as a law enforcement officer in New York City. And um, upon retiring, uh, we moved down to Florida. And uh, it was just, uh, I think it was Hurricane Irma, I think it was, where I was like, I, I need some communications. I have nothing down here, you know, for just in case. So I decided to look back into getting my ham license since I had more time on my hands now. And um, that's when I found out the code requirement was lifted years ago. <laughs> um, so I took my I took the exam back in 2019 and uh, passed. And uh, I've been taking uh, each uh, upgrade ever since. And now I'm all the way up to extra. And and that's how I am uh, here now. 
Now you're now you're just a crazy active soul on uh, on the radio. So you you shared a lot of photos with us, which Josh is going to happily scroll through here, and you can uh, feel free to comment on some of them. And that this looks like one of your first activations. Uh, well, this was uh, last year, December of last year, in a dead hit, uh, winter uh, in New York City, uh, activating a park in uh, Manhattan at Riverbank State Park. Okay. Uh, that was my uh, antenna set up at another park in the Bronx, uh, Roberto Clemente State Park. Uh, and it does look there. like it might be cold, maybe a little oh, cold yeah. outside. Okay. I, w- I, w- I was the only one in the park, uh, besides two other park workers that were walking around. But other than that, I had the whole park to myself. All right. Um, this is a, a map of all the contacts I've made that day while in the Bronx at uh, Roberto Clemente State Park there uh, from the Wolf River Coil antenna that I use. Awesome. Looks like like there's two that are actually off the map on the east there. Where did those end up? Do you remember? Uh, um, I believe one was uh, to uh, South Africa or the island off South Africa. I forget which one that is. And uh, another one to uh, Europe. Fabulous. So pretty good job with the setup you had there. This is a, a, con- a map of the contacts I made in Manhattan at Riverbank State Park. Okay. And that's me uh, posing at the Roberto Clemente State Park in the Bronx. Famous baseball player from the Yankees. And this one was uh, my Kilo Award. I made uh, over a thousand contacts at a park here in Florida. Uh, this one was at uh, Pumpkin Hill Creek State Park in, in Jacksonville, Florida here. So that means that you can make like lots of different awards uh, through the POTA organization. There's several steps you can do. Oh yeah, that's what makes the POTA um, so great is you could work towards a w- different awards. Okay. Um, you know, so you could you could uh, pace yourself and challenge yourself to get these awards. Josh, have and, you gotten um, any? Sorry, yeah. I was muted. No, I I, I don't have any because I, I I frankly don't get out there nearly as as much as I should. But just to put some flavor onto that, the Kilo Award is pretty cool because it's 1,000 contacts in one entity. So that's usually something you build up to. So my congratulations on that. That's always something I know people really try to achieve in their their favorite park. That's like 1,000 followers on YouTube. Yeah. (laughs) So very good, yeah. (laughs) All right, let's... uh... <clears throat> and this must be one of your Florida potas. Yeah, that's one of my Florida potas. I'm not sure. I can't remember which park. Most likely uh, Pumpkin Hill. Uh, one of my favorite parks to go to. And I sit there for hours uh, working off a battery and, and having fun. So now you you got to tell us, uh, as oh, see, here's some of your equipment coming up. What are you using most of the okay. time? Well, I'm using my Icom 7300. I have uh, a second one that I, I carry with me. And my uh, little Pelican case there with the battery and uh, the antenna in the background there is the Wolf River Coil with the 17-foot chameleon uh, uh, telescopic whip on top. Yeah, it looks really nice. Uh, this one here is me sitting at the uh, near the water, the St. John's River, at Fort Caroline uh, Memorial Park, having fun. Oh. Yeah, you have to smile a little bit more to, to ensure us that you're having fun. Uh, uh, don't worry, I'm, I'm always smiling on the inside. I might not smile too much. Uh, this is me and uh, Bill Brown. He uh, He's a, a, a great activator here in Florida. He goes to a ton of parks. I, can't, I would never be able to keep up with him. And uh, he happened to be coming through Jacksonville, and he called me up and said, hey, I'm coming through. Uh, I said, well, let's meet up at a park and activate a dual, dual, a dual activation. So we, we met at Yellow Bluff State Park and uh, activated that park together. And I just have to say, everybody, when I was talking to Mike last night, he's so humble. He's I don't know, you know, what do I have to talk about? But it, people are reaching out to you to come work with you and operate with you. So I think you have a lot to uh, be thrilled about. And, um, yeah, you're doing a good job. His Let's call is K four N Y M by by uh, just in case. That's Bill again. <laughs> and it, he 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 is having fun. Okay. All right. So let's see. This is me uh, in the winter time here in Florida at uh, I believe a Jennings State Forest, if I'm not mistaken. 
Just having fun. So wintertime in Florida, that means it got down to what, 60? <laughs> <laughs> well, it actually gets down to about 32 degrees at, at night. Oh, you know? I know, so, I know. I'm, it, just, it, I'm just yanking your chain. I know. Yeah. And uh, while while Josh scrolls through some of these pictures, I have to tell you, Mike, some of the comments in the chat are, and I'm going back here a bit. Oh my gosh, thank goodness he's been a cop in New York City. Thank you for everything you've done. And what a top-notch operator. Um, people are really impressed. So, all right, who's this guy? Uh, that's Terry. That's one of my good friends there, W4CXT. Um, that was a first-time activation for him as well. Oh, right. Uh, that's me again at Yellow Bluff State Park. I really like that case, by the way. That's very, is that is that the real thing or is that a Harbor that is Freight a, one? That is an official Pelican case. Okay. The Harbor Freight cases are good too. Don't get it wrong, but uh, that's the official Pelican case. I I had laying around with uh, some other items in it that wasn't <laughs> being used. Uh, let's see. I was also an avid hunter before I started um, activating parks, so. I was able to get all 50 states, including Hawaii and Alaska, because those are the two hardest ones to get from the East Coast. Uh -huh. And so I got uh, the All States Hunter Hunter Award on that one. Now, what do you do, what do you do bandwise when you when you activate? Are you are you pretty straight and simple, 20 and 40, or do you do the work mm. work bands? No. What do you do? I go I go to all the bands. Yeah. Depending on the time of day that I get out, um, I might start on 10 meters. I even might, well, nowadays I've been starting on six meters and I work my way down. So I'll start from six meters, stay on there for maybe, you know, 20 minutes to see. Then I'll drop down to 10. Yeah. Then I'll go to 15, 12, 17. I, I go to all the bands. Um, the only ones that really don't hit too much is because it's daytime and it's 75 meters and 80. So. Yeah, um, that makes uh, sense. Yeah, mostly phone or some digital phone. or what? Yeah. I okay. do all phone. I I'm tried the digital. I just can't. I just can't see myself driving to a park and sitting there and laying the computer. Uh, you know, just, <laughs> just doing FT8. It's it's cool. I've tried it, but it's not my style. All right then. Again, Mike's like setup there looks. It looks just very clean and simple. It's good. And what's this contact? Okay, so this was a extension of the other map that Josh was asking about. Uh. Those two. Those two lines that were going uh, across the sea, uh, ocean there. So uh, one was to Europe and the other one was to, looks like down there, I, I can't remember, island, one of the islands down and uh, the Caribbean. Probably, most like probably Puerto Rico. Yeah, it was KP4. Yeah. <clears throat> Good. Oh, hey. Who's hey. <laughs> That, that was a scary. You have to give us a warning before photos like this. Oh my God. Uh, it was the was, uh, first time meeting Josh in person at uh, Hamcation there in Orlando. Right on. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a video you were doing, right? Uh, yeah, that was a video. Oh, you, you, should, still, uh, you should definitely plug your uh, YouTube uh, channel there. Josh, what are you wearing on your neck, by the way? It looks like you have like a half of a pager or uh, a beeper. That's a, that's a microphone. It's a Is wireless it? mic pack. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mike, don't forget to tell us what, what you have a YouTube channel. We could follow you to see some of your pod activations. Sure. You can follow me at uh, KG2MM Ham Radio. Okay. Um, I don't have tons of videos like uh, a lot of other activators do, but uh, make sure you just uh, in the search bar type in poda. And you can find tons of red, uh, video creators uh, with tons of videos uh, out there and just enjoy and learn and uh, get out there and have fun on the radio. Very good. And uh, what else is on your aspects? You, you got all this poda. Are you going to come out to Colorado and do a soda with us? <laughs> yeah, <I'll>, I would <laughs> love to do a soda. I have not have I've not had done a soda yet, and I would love to uh, get one under my belt. Well, we'll and, bring uh, some oxygen for the 14,000 foot level because uh, you know, uh, you're never uh. going to be able to breathe. <laughs> But uh, we will put uh, you on the microphone. But this this is the Outstanding Operator Award he was nominated for, which I think is fantastic. Yeah, That's awesome. Uh, it was a complete shock on that one. I could imagine. You, you know, you're going to be one of those top-notch, um, what did somebody help me out? I'm ARRL now, and I should know this. Uh, that top A operator 
thing that you get nominated A1 for. A1 opera. A1. A1. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. A1. <laughs> well, he's you know, he's going to be there soon enough. Yeah, I just enjoy helping people and uh, getting them out and having fun. That's my main goal. Uh, you know, if I don't activate a park, it doesn't affect me. I, I'm not going to push anybody off and say, well, okay. you better learn because I got to do my activation. <laughs> That's not my style. <laughs> You know, um, being a supervisor, you know, being a supervisor in the in the largest in a large metropolitan city, uh, you get to learn different styles and how to you know act with different type of uh, people and operators. Uh, you know, so yeah, there's uh, all different uh, personalities and attitudes out there. And you uh, also, that's, oh, that's my buddy. That's my buddy Dom. I took him out for his first activation up in uh, South Carolina, up in Lake Watery. His call is the Whiskey Four Delta Oscar Mike, and he's in the chat as well. And uh, he had a great time just uh, hanging out and getting out the house. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, uh, let's see. We're down to see uh, the SpaceX launch uh, early in the morning. So while we were down there, we went to Activator Park. That's my uh, uh, couple of my uh, club members there. That's uh, Rajesh, K4SK, and Brandy, uh, K4 Papa Lima, uh, down there at Canaveral National Seashore. That was my first time there as well. So that was Amazing. Great. And uh, they did their f uh, first activations as well. Very nice. Yeah, it looks like they were having a really fun time doing that. So. Glad you introduced them to it. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so I guess this will be going towards the, the next section of field day. So this was uh, from the last field, from field day, what, two weeks ago? Um, that was my little, my setup there at, at, uh, at uh, the location that we had set up for the Duval Aries group. Um, North Florida Amateur Radio Communications uh, group there. We had our Aries set up. Nice and framing that with, little... that, with that logo there on the shirt. Nice framing, whoever snagged that picture, right? They should use yeah. that on the website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm very active with the, or to, in the Aries uh, group as well. Um, that was uh, Todd's uh, set up there. He, he's usually the, the, grand, uh, the grand master of the field day. He brings out uh, all types of equipment and solar panels and such and so, Mike, before I forget this question in chat, somebody wants to know what what size battery are you using when you go I'm out? I'm using a 20 amp hour Bioeno. Oh, Bioeno, Gordo, ding, ding, ding. I think he dropped off, but yeah, the best. Yes. Okay. Thanks for that. All right, let's go back to your field day setup there. <laughs> uh, it's just a picture of my uh, setup there, just before field day started. Now, do you, do you do you have pictures of your antenna setup or anything for field day? I, I think I, I think I included one, but okay. uh, not well, not hundred percent sure. I didn't well, I'll ask you see. if I don't see one, but yeah, keep going. <clears throat> that is um, Brian K four B J S, and uh, I forgot the other ham's uh, call sign there, but that was his setup there. He's a uh, section manager section manager for Duval County in Jacksonville, Florida, for Aries. Nice. Now, were you guys like at a park in a ballpark? Is that why they were uh, behind the chain link fence? <laughs> They're in the we, were actually, we were actually yeah. at a church. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we, it would have been nice to be at a park, but we were at a church. Um, one, the pastor of the of Bo uh, Hogan Baptist Church in Jacksonville, is the active ham, so he lets us uh, use his uh, facilities for our meetings, our monthly oh, meetings, nice. as well as uh, the baseball fields that's behind the church. Uh, for, for field day operations. And we have pulleys set up all, all around already, so it's ready to go. You just put your antenna, pull it up, and, and you're good to go. We have ground rods uh, already in place. Oh, smart. <laughs> around <Yeah. laughs> around uh, the <laughs> pavilion there. And it looks and, like you uh, guys got some kiddos there, too. Yeah, and that's Todd, that's Todd uh, showing a, a, a young ham uh, the ropes, and he got to get on the air and enjoy himself as well. Fantastic. And then I just saw some huge solar <clears throat> panels. Yeah, that's that's uh that's some of the solar panels that Todd uh, brings out to, to field day. Um, usually he has about four or five rows uh, of solar panels for anybody that wants to use them. He can he'll let you use them, and you can run your station totally off of solar. And what you guys run as? 
Were you three alpha? What were you? Five, five alpha. Five alpha. That's a pretty heavy setup. Five stations, man. Mm, Anybody that sets up that many, you know, that's a lot of work. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, and here's night operations. Yeah, that's my tent. I, uh, you know, I had my little light and my canopy, and I stayed out till kind of late <laughs> until <laughs> the mosquitoes started uh, biting even heavier, and then I left <laughs> and came back the next day. Well, you look like you're enjoying yourself, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know, though. I didn't see any food pictures, so I'm I'm questioning. Is it really well, a bad the day food? if there's no yeah, food? What's, what's up with well, that? Well... Our food was catered by the Salvation Army. We have a good wow. partnership with the Salvation Army for in Duval Aries. And uh, Saturday evening, they came and, and fed us uh, some good barbecue. No problem with that. So that Can was I the, come next year? <laughs> that sure. was the last image, and I didn't see any antennas. So maybe you just tell oh. us, you know, how did you handle the antennas and then uh, having a five alpha station on the air? How mm -hmm. did you handle all the... The potential issues and, with them uh, being so close. Well, we are not uh, a heavy uh, group on contesting. We just, you know, go out and operate. So we would take breaks. You know, one station will get on uh, 40, another one on 20. I had a bandpass filter on my station as well. And, um, you know, bandpass filters all around. But typically we didn't have a lot. The station is all transmitting at one time to uh, lim mitigate the interference uh, amongst each other. So that's how we did it. Fantastic. I, th I think it's a great setup. It looks like it's a great uh, group of people. And what was the club name again, just so we we get it clear? Because I think okay. I missed it. Well, the, the club name is the North Florida Amateur Radio Society, no okay. forest for short. And the uh, Aries group is Duval Aries. That's Delta Uniform Victor Alpha Lima Aries group in Jacksonville, Florida. Very cool. Well, Mike, thank you so much for being here tonight. We really appreciate it. Is there anything else you want our viewers to know about what you do? Um, no, just follow me and uh, go out and have fun. Play on the radio. <laughs> I love it. I think we will. That was his YouTube, and link will be in the description. So thanks, everybody. Uh, uh. Thank you, Josh. Um, with that, Mike, we're going to say 7-3. Stick around, of course, uh, and we're going to go to a word from ICOM. Be a Field Day leader. Field Day is Ham Radio's most popular event. On June 26th and 27th, more than 40,000 North American hams come together to operate remotely. Connect with nature. Connect with friends. With a powerful and high-quality ICOM radio, easily cut through pileups to get that contesting edge. Our popular IC705 Portable IC7300 and IC7610 SDR transceivers are the clear choice for DXers and contesters across the globe. The IC705 is the perfect transceiver for hams who enjoy both the great indoors and outdoors on field day. Features and functionalities at the tips of your fingers in a portable package covering HF, 6 meters, 2 meters, and 70 centimeters. And it weighs in at just under 2 pounds. 4.3 inch color touchscreen with live band scope and waterfall. 5 watts with BP272, 10 watts with external 13.8 volt DC. Single sideband CW, AM, FM, as well as full D Star functions. The IC7300 is a high performance innovative HF transceiver with a compact design that will far exceed your expectations. This is a radio that changed the way entry level HF is designed. RF direct sampling, 15 discrete bandpass filters, large 4.3 inch color touchscreen, real time spectrum scope, and SD memory card slot. The real HF fun starts here. The IC7610 is the SDR every ham watts. This high performance SDR has the ability to pick out faint signals in the presence of stronger adjacent signals. The ICOM IC7610 is a direct sampling software defined radio that has changed the world's definition of an SDR transceiver. RF direct sampling, 110 dB RMDR, independent dual receivers, and dual digicell. For more information on these and all the great ICOM radios, visit icomamerica.com slash amateur. And thanks again to ICOM for sponsoring the show here, Ham Nation. I want to remind everybody that, you know, 
they do something pretty cool every time we do an episode. You can join into the swag giveaway. The link is in the description. It's for it's ICOM America forward slash ham nation. Again, link in the description for the show notes. If you click on enter now, you can be entered into a swag giveaway. They pick three winners every time we go live at ham nation. And at the end of the month, they pick a grand prize winner that wins a radio. This month, a great VHF UHF dual band analog radio 2730A will be given away. But the winners for the swag prizes this episode is Keith G K K 7 A Q N, Christopher B N 1 K C E, and Stephen E K I 5 T H M. Also, it reminded me while I was watching that ad, uh, and also what Gordon said earlier. I have a 705, and one of my favorite things to do with it when I've got it hooked up to a VHF UHF antenna is watch the ISS and other satellites as they go across my waterfall. As uh, Gordon mentioned, Doppler shift, you can do that with the programming of the radio, but if you've got a radio with a screen, you can just kind of hand dial it in when running in crossband repeat or crossband transmit mode. So on your receive side, you just kind of walk it in with the VFO and you can transmit on your uplink, which is pretty handy. That works for the 9700, obviously, and also the 705 if you're out in the field. Anyway, big thank you to ICOM. Let's go talk to Don, see what he's up to. Maybe he's got that hat on again. No, it's uncomfortable because it hits the back of my chair, and I don't want to sit like this, like I'm all hunched over. So, uh, no, the hat's, the hat's right down here. I did uh, make good use of it for uh, the 4th of July, though. I went over to a co-worker's home and uh, enjoyed a nice uh, cookout, and we had, a, we had a good time on the 4th of July. So that was how that went, and did a bunch of, uh, like I said, the uh, 13 colonies chasing and uh, got, the, uh, got the full pull on that, so Ooh. we're pretty happy about that. All right, we don't have a report from Dr. T this week. She uh, was fairly busy, I guess, but uh, you can always follow her on Twitter, at Tamitha Scove, and, of course, check out spaceweatherwoman.com, and she has a great YouTube channel as well where you can see all of her reports. Just search Tamitha Scove on YouTube, and uh, uh, so we'll uh, check in with her next time, and, of course, you follow her, like I said. But let's go ahead and get the news of the week from Amateur Radio Newsline. From Amateur Radio Newsline Report, number 2331, this is Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, July 6, 2022. In Europe, Ham Radio Expo made a triumphant return, and Newsline was there. Last weekend saw the 45th Ham Radio Expo in Friedrichshafen, the first after three years of lockdowns and two cancelled events. All were eager to get back to the Neue Messe in Friedrichshafen on Lake Constance in the south of Germany. Turnout was expected to be around 10,000 compared to just under 14,000 in 2019. After the effects of the pandemic and with the current inflation levels, this is not a bad showing. While the main hall seemed a little less full than normal due to the stands of Kenwood and Yesu not being there along with the large Vimo retailer, the flea market in its two Zeppelin-sized halls was fuller than in 2019. Talking with dealers and manufacturers, I learned they were glad to have, it seems, come through the pandemic. Several, however, said it was close and another lockdown would have meant the end to their businesses. Many are worried about parts supply and while most have stockpiled components, their stock is dwindling. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm at DD5LP. In Amateur Radio Business News, the passing of the guard continues with word of a prominent silent key. The man behind the highly successful company Airhorn Technological Operations has become a silent key. Dick Airhorn W4EA, W4ETO, started the company in 1970 and began production of the line of high-power Alpha RF amplifiers so popular in the amateur radio community. Dick was a lifelong ham. Mary Bittner, WB0PXM, told Newsline that Dick and her late husband, the Reverend Paul Bittner, who had held the call sign w 0 a IH, had been friends since their Minnesota high school days when they met through a school amateur radio club. She described Dick as a good friend and a man of faith. She said Dick, who was in failing health, died Sunday, June 26th in Virginia. He was 88. Newsline anchor Neil Rapp, WB9VPG. A special event is underway to celebrate the life of a ham known globally as a man of adventure and compassion. The gifts of friendship, humanitarian gestures, and good DX that filled the life of Zoro Miyazawa, JH1AJT, are being celebrated by operators of a month long special event station, 3 Delta 2 Alpha Juliet Tango, in Fiji through to late July. 
Zorro, who had cancer, became a silent key in March of this year. Throughout his long amateur radio career, his de-expeditions helped put notable and coveted DXs in the logbooks of hams around the world. Zorro was also known for his charitable work on behalf of children in Cambodia, Bangladesh, Japan and elsewhere. The special event operators will be on the air using CW, SSB, FT4, FT8 and VAR ACHF digital chat until the 27th of July, which would have been his 73rd birthday. According to the station's page on QRZ.com, the final day on the air will be marked with a farewell party organised by Zorro's widow at one of the schools her husband founded in Fiji. QSL via Clublog. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jason Daniels, VK2LAW. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news for four decades and counting at arnewsline.org. With Ed Durant, DD5LP, Neil Rapp, WB9VPG, Jason Daniels, VK2LAW, Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the news desk in New York, and our news team across the globe, I'm Don Wellbanks, AE5DW. 7-3, we'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. And a big thanks to the Newsline crew, and uh, we're missing Dr. T, but of course, like I said, follow her on Twitter, uh, spaceweatherwoman.com, and her YouTube channel. So now from my great big hat <laughs> to a little bitty radio, here's uh, Joe, K0NEB. Sexy hat. Thank you, baby. Uh-oh. Did we lose Joe? Joe? Joe's Joe. froze. Joe's froze. Uh-oh. <laughs> what happened to Joe? Well, you figure that out. I'll talk. Yeah. Um, well, so he, he's got to figure it out if he's gone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a, I just say that's like a blanket statement. You take that away from me. Got and it. I will put something else stall, on the stall table. Stall, like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, I, I'm going to give Mike, Mike, uh, I hope you have these papers in front of you because Don showed his cute little list, the little list. Yeah. Mike has 13 colonies on three pages. Yeah, oh See, I don't I don't do that. I'm <laughs> I I'm not as industrious, although I think I'm going to try to do Me that. Neither. I'm going to try to I'm going to try to do all sideband. I'm going to try to do um, you know, all digital and and uh, my goal for next year is to get back, well, I say get back, um get into CW. I learned it yeah. years ago when I, you know, when I had to. And but I've I've never made a single in 25 years of uh, mm -hmm. of hamming, over 25 years now, a single hand sent um, CW contact. I've done it on the keyboard, but mm -hmm. I haven't done it uh, hand sent. And I spent a lot of money on a pretty nice um, paddle key years ago at Dayton. And I really need to. That's my goal for next year. <laughs> it's time is, to put it to use. Is, yeah, is to actually do some hand sent CW. So okay. it, and the only the only excuse is is uh, is doing it. So there. And you there's go. and I don't Mike. I, I don't think Josh can't. Uh, I don't think he's switching us. But oh, Mike has all roll. three. Sh there, there look at that. Oh, look at you. Yeah, show off. He's got the FTs. He's got oh, the CW. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Phone. And it's, what nice. are you missing? The one Tango Mic 13, Mike? I'm uh, missing actually the, the GB13. GB13. Yeah. Okay. For CW. That's the only I, one I need. I, wow. I, need. I, I get one in my logs each, and I get 13 contacts, and I'm like, I've done my job. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's it. That's frustrating enough to, to sometimes um, punch through some of those uh, pile ups. Yeah. Boy, and Prop was not with us this weekend for SSB. Uh, I'll no. tell you that. Gordo, are you a 13 colony chaser? Um, I am, but I only have a dozen, so I need to work oh. hard. Okay, which which one do you need? India was my elusive one this year, so um, there's always got, that one. Yeah, I have to look my log, okay. but I need one more. I, I, I don't I want got, to take it away from the colonies, but I want to mention, Don, if you're getting back in a CW, shout out to POTA. The POTA exchange for CW is, yeah. is oh, very yeah. straightforward. It's a real mm -hmm. nice way to get back into it. That's been where my contacts have been hunting people from home, and it's been it's been yeah. great. Yeah. I'll check that out. I made, all of, I made all of my contacts but one on uh, July 2nd. Wow. And, wow. And it was July 4th was when I got uh, GB13, and I got him on D-Star. Because I, I tried FT4 and FT8 and sideband, and it just wasn't happening. He got on D-Star, and that's how I got it. So they were pretty big pileups for that 
for that dude. I'll tell you what. Uh, Josh, you chasing 13 colonies too? I, I didn't have the time uh, while I was doing my after chat on Saturday. I did have a couple of the individuals running the meme appreciation month. <laughs> uh, hop in and and I made some contacts with some I, of the the meme. I can't meme, even imagine the meme the meme crew. Uh, oh my! Can, Canada apparently you can pay them pretty much a, a just a flat sum of money and they'll let you make up any kind of call sign you want. So your really? suffix your suffix can be like eight to ten characters and they don't care. So they had wow. like. They have some wild ones like Rick Roll, and uh, I'll, I'll pull up the website so we'll, we can see it. But um, that's hilarious. Someone I've answer. Never heard of that. Someone it's answer. Snake funny. Doctor, could someone please tell me where to find all the frequencies for the thirteen colonies? Oh well, you know you got to follow DX clusters for that. Yeah. That yeah. Is DXSummit.fi is your yeah. friend, and in the search box you can just put all the. Uh, but all the all various the call, call signs. signs. Yeah, in the search box. And the, yeah, yeah. I, you, okay, full disclosure, everyone, I do it a different way. So I choose a band. So I, I open up HRD because it's easier to share logs. We have numerous logs here in this household. So I'll use old software HRD, not the bought and paid for one. Am I allowed to say that? Um, and so I'll just pull up one band so I can see who's on that band so I can at least stay tuned, especially if you're using power, you want to stay tuned. You don't want to have to keep jumping back and forth between bands. So that's the way I, that's my um, strategy, but everybody is kind of different, but yes, if you want to see a full thing, like maybe there's more on 40. So you just jump to 40 and keep it yeah. tuned for 40, yeah. that kind of thing. But man, I could not hear these suckers on 40 this year. I'll tell you what, maybe 40 was noisy. It was like, I would have had an hour window and that's about it. And then it was so that, and then when they're on 40 and 75, you got to figure that they're getting their neighbors. So everybody in New England wants to work them at that point in time. So you should probably just lay back on that and let New England work them and get them in the logs. So you you stick to your 20s and 15s and maybe even the work bands if they're on that and give 40 and 75 to everybody on the East Coast. It's great when the operators work the numbers because that gives everybody uh, an even yes, chance. Yes, yes. Yeah, ding, like ding, ding. Although... Like Guess what? I'm a one call in Colorado, so I'm a one call in a zero land. So yeah. they like to point. <laughs> they're gonna That's turn. True. They're like, I'm pointed to one land, and you're like trying to call. But most, mostly, I, every time they pick me up on the back of their beam, if that's what yeah. they're using. But um, that's it. Yeah, you gotta have a strategy when you go into this, you guys. Next year, we're gonna work this out, and we'll have it on the show and tell you the best way to get the 13 colonies logged. Maybe have some representatives from there. So yeah, and be patient too with these guys i mean oh, I've, yes. I've been watching the facebook yeah. group for 13 colonies on the air and let me tell you something there's a lot of nastiness going on out there be patient with these Not guys fair. they are all they're all volunteers they all have jobs they all have families they all have better stuff they could be doing <laughs> rather than than uh you know sitting there you know for you for hours on end uh yeah. you know so be nice be courteous um you know, follow the, uh, follow the, 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 you know, DX the, the, the hams. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. The DX, exactly. The golden rule, follow it all and, and be nice. And that's, be nicer than that for the right. love of everything. This is for exactly. America, right? Exactly. <laughs> so, and just, thank <laughs> them when you make contact with them. I mean, unless you're on like a, one of the yeah. FTs or something where you really, you know, can't make a comment, but man, thank them for their time and, and and show them that you appreciate them. That goes a long way. That makes them want to come back and do it next year. Yep. We have we have all in this uh, sitting in this room right here. Well, separate rooms. We have all ran a pileup, and we know exactly how frustrating it can be oh, when yeah. you're like, oh yeah, you guys stopping just stop. Okay. I said whiskey November golf. You're coming back with Kila Sierra Fox. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just yeah. No. Right. Or or half yeah. a call sign twice uh, and not not the yeah. full call sign. There was a lot. Uh, I I have heard some some wild bad actors uh, out chasing the the colonies so guys really you know DX Play nice. code of conduct I, and I, DS code, I believe DS code of conduct. I believe that a lot of people really are QRP but I know the difference yeah. <laughs> yeah. well we got I Joe back difference. but I think okay. he's he's on a phone so I'm not sure uh -oh. if he's okay Joe can you hear us I can hear you but uh, I'm having issues 
Well, that's okay, Joe. Uh, we can we can do the kit another time because we're we're almost oh, at the, totally. the end of the hour, and I've got some uh, images from field day uh, that I was going to talk to if if we had the time, and and maybe that'll work. Joe, is that all right with you? Otherwise, we can just yeah, look at your fine. ceiling light. I do like it. It's good and choice. I will. With okay. the popcorn finish. Yeah, yes. it's got yeah. that. Yeah, very good. Well, you Nothing you work around class. with it, and if you if you end up making it work, that's fine. No big deal. Otherwise, um, I'll just I'll just go ahead and take it. So. Let me see if I'm if I'm up over here. Oh, that's the meme appreciation, by the way. Uh, oh, that's, great! That's what that looks like. So, <laughs> those are the so those those are some wild long call signs. VB3 Harambe. If you if you give them six <laughs> sixty bucks, uh, if you give the the Canadian, I don't know who it, who it is. I, it's one of their. Um, it, I, I can't I'm remember so the disturbed. name of it. That's wild. But I've yeah, you, you can that. you can get some wild call signs out of out of Canada for sixty bucks. So that that's pretty good. Rick Roll. Yeah. I made contact with Rick Roll and. That's funny. Uh, I I'm not sure who it was. The other one. Rick Roll was one though. Anyway, okay. So I uh, I I did a I did a I did a field day uh, out on the beach. So oh, I, I got invited out by the Huntington Beach Racies team. A lot of you saw this in my video, but I thought I'd just show some pictures for the Ham Nation crew here. Anyway, beautiful spot. This is actually the Dog Beach, which is really fun. So you get to see a lot of uh, puppers running around, which is pretty good. Uh, I set up a, a very cool antenna. I brought a uh, Buddy Hex. So Buddy you were Pole... ambitious. No, Please. this is this is easy. Uh, Buddy is Pole sent me this hex beam to take a look at, and it's a. It's a 10 meter mast. You use a little bit less than the than the top two pieces there. Telescoping mast, and the, the mast is actually keyed in such a way that uh, it's hand rotatable with a little crank down at the base. So yeah, cool. you got two elements on you know pretty much pretty much all the all the bands 20 and lower. And, and sorry, 20 and higher frequency uh, for field day, which is great. So you just get out there, set up 6, 10, 15, and 20, and possibly put a triplexer or something in line. Unfortunately, I didn't have a triplexer, but we did have bandpass filters, and it, it worked out okay. 20 was was fantastic. Bandpass filters back. are a must. I'm yeah, back. yeah. Oh, you're back, Joe. Joe's great. back. Okay, so I'll make it quick. So there was the, the field set up there. We had a little operating station inside the uh, the trailer. I don't know if I have a picture of that. There was uh, some of the the SWR. Just a quick show you on this antenna. It's a 1.1 1 .1 on 15. Six nice meters rig was 1. expert, 3. by the way. Yeah, uh, 10 was 1.1 1. 1 and and 20 was 1.23, which is just you know fine. You know, obviously that that's a that. so no, I'm sorry, complain. Joshua. I I gotta stop you though, but yeah. I'm try I couldn't see the frequencies very well because it's kind of really really small here. Was that in the phone portion there where it was 1.2 1. 2, 1 uh, uh, it 1. was 1.2 1. 1 at 14.192. So you get a little bit okay. of the, the higher side of CW and yep. most of the uh, most of the voice there, if not all of it, because it it is at the end of the day pretty much a dipole with yeah. the with the with the hex beams. I was so. just curious on if you had to cut anything or if it was just no, all good. Or, I, yeah. all right. I did not. It showed up the Tuesday before field day, and I walked outside. I set it up. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. I was like, well, this is. This is fantastic. And then I put it all back in the boxes and took it out to the field, set it up. That was it. Done deal. Easy. Sweet. Easy. Wow. Good job. I like that. Very so, cool. So for everybody in the chat who who also on my comments of the video talking about Chris, Chris is slammed uh, with, with sales and people that want this antenna <laughs> and all his antennas. He has a, uh, a new website update for the Buddy Hex. So if you go to the Buddy Poll page – and you pull up the buddy hex. There is an email address that gets you on the list, and he's just working through the list. A lot of people are already on it, so have some patience. But he's he's working through it the best he can with the people he has available to do the work. So thanks, Chris. Working his own pile up. He's then. he's working his own pile up. That's for sure. <laughs> okay, Joe's here. So Joe, I'll I'll throw it to you, and and I appreciate you struggling through it to make it work. Awesome, All right, Jeff. and and what's interesting is is that I could hear you and everything worked fine. I have no idea what caused it. Reset everything, and we're back and rock and rolling. Oh, okay. 
Um, I operated field day. That's probably what it was. Yeah, Yeah, I think so. Uh, I operated field day from K0KKV, the Lincoln Amateur Radio Club, and we are known as King Kong's Vampires and uh, had a lot of fun. I did 20-meter sideband as well as FT8 and a lot of FT4. So that's what I did on field day. And now we're going to show what I've been doing on the bench. And uh, this is a really fun kit. Now, what this is, you're looking at the parts that went into it. Now, you look at this thing and you look at the circuit board and you'll see the top and you'll see some surface mount parts are already on that board. Uh, the bottom's got even a lot more. Uh, this is, uh, I'm going to describe it, it is a four-band digital modes transceiver, puts out five to six watts, and uh, it is an SDR. And the sound card and everything is all built in. And when all assembled, it is the size of a deck of cards and fits in your shirt pocket. Now, if you look at the parts, you don't see a lot of parts there. There's a dozen or so capacitors, some diodes and some chokes and four transistors. And guess what? There are 10 toroids you get to do, including a binocular one, a trifiler, and a three-tap. So... Uh, you got to be content with uh, making a lot of toroids, but it's all worth it in the end. Uh, that's what you spend most of the time with. I hate to say it to some people who don't like kits with toroids, but uh, uh, the reward is right there. Now, that's what the case looks like. Uh, they do charge 20 bucks more for the case. So I think it was something like $80, uh, $86 or something when I was done uh, ordering this kit. Uh, the case is well worth it, absolutely well worth it, uh, fits perfect. Uh, this is what the main board looks like after you put all the capacitors uh, that are through hole, as well as the uh, four diodes and the uh, chokes and uh, uh, not the transistors yet. Uh, but that's what the board looks like a little more close up. And you can see lots of toroids in there. Now you've got the diodes in place and so forth and the transistors. Now you notice they're clamped down to the board because it uses the board and that bolt as a heat sink. Uh, to the right of that is T1, which is a binocular core toroid. And I won't get into a lot of the description of it, but it's just another form of uh, uh, inductor. And actually, it's a transformer. Uh, I did the shortened winding for the secondary so that it wouldn't put out so much if I hit it with 12 volts. And I have to tell you, they tell you uh, that it can run on 12 volts or 9 volts, depending on how you wind that transformer. And when he says 12 volts, it's not 13.8, which is what we are accustomed to. It's actually 12 volts or below. And I've had good results at 10 or 11 volts, and I will show you what it did when we did that. This is what a trifiler toroid looks like. And what you have to do is you have to take and wind those three wires together. Now, they are all identical. So it's a... Uh, uh, problem in trying to distinguish which wire is which once you're done. And I'll go over that in a minute. But this was a 10-turn toroid. So you have this triple wound wire. And uh, so you actually have three leads coming out both ends. And then you separate it out like that. And that looks kind of messy. And we got to clean those up and get the insulation completely off of those. And then what we do is we take and we put that on the board and we flip that over. And I've cleaned off most of the insulation and stuff. But what we do to make sure that there's nothing left causing a problem is I turn up the soldering iron a bit and I hold it in place for more than about uh, 10, 15 seconds is about uh, what you want to do instead of one or two seconds to solder. And that allows the solder to flow through the hole both ways and melts off any stray insulation that might be on that wire because sometimes some of the holes are a little too narrow for tinned wire, which is what I usually like to do in a toroid. But if you notice in this picture, 
you're going to see surface mount parts that are already there. You don't have to put those in place, but you have to be really, really careful with your soldering iron so you don't drip solder on any of those pins or loosen up any of those resistors. So you got to be really careful and you want to use a real small, sharp, conical tip. And of course, as always, I recommend 6337 uh, Rosincore No Clean Solder does the best job on these. But like I said, I kind of left the temperature up a bit because obviously a toroid is not thermally sensitive like semiconductors and so on. And it makes sure that the insulation is melted off. You might see it smoke a little bit and uh, you'll get it soldered nice and neat. Um, this is what the board looks like with all the toroids and all the parts in place, and it's ready to go in the box. You can see the plugs and jacks are on the right. Um, there is a USB jack. Uh, there is a jack for a cable for push to talk, and what that is is to trigger an outside amplifier if you have one. It has your power input jack and your BNC connector. Now, this is a look at the bottom of the board. That looks pretty frightening. As you can see, all the terminals where you had soldered through the board, and you got to make sure you trim those real close when you do that, because otherwise you're going to have a problem when you put it in the case. But look at all those surface mount parts, and you don't have to solder those. Those are all done for you. And that's because these are things like a sound card and SDR uh FPGA and things like that and interfaces um, and USB drivers and so forth. This is quite a, a radio. And so all these surface mount parts are done for you. Once again, you're going to pay the price because you got to do 10 toroids. But guess what? After a while, you're going to get used to it. And then you won't be afraid of toroids anymore. So what we do is we put it in the case and it just slides in. You snap the case together and screw the covers on it. And so that's the back end, what it looks like. Uh, real simple. And that's the uh, front of it. And it doesn't weigh much. And uh, it's really kind of a cute kit. But when you look at this, this was my very first attempt with this kit. I had it hooked to my TH3 beam, oh, pointed, wow. pointed east. But as you can see, I had east coast, west coast, and Europe. And this is with... 5.8 watts measured, 5.8 watts on uh, FT8. Look at all that was actually able to hear me here in Nebraska. So, and we always have kind of the disadvantage when you're going to Europe or to Asia because we're right in the middle of the country. But uh, for sweepstakes or parks or something, when when people are all over the country, we're we're in a good spot. But uh, if if this little kit can do that, boy, it's it's going to be fun. You can do all sorts of other modes with it. Uh, you can do uh, PSK31. There are guys playing with uh, RTTY uh, with it, and we will hold that up and let you look. You can see it's just a tiny little thing. I can put it in the shirt pocket. And... Uh, uh, you can do all the digital modes, like I said, FT4, you can do whisper and so forth. Uh, if you lower the input voltage down to about 10 volts uh, and keep the power down to about 4 watts or so, you can use it as a whisper beacon. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just amazing what it does. And it's not that expensive, uh, definitely under $100 uh, shipped to you. And uh, it's a fun kit to build, but once again, you're going to need to wind some toroids. Now, I'm going to reach behind me here, and you can see that I have made up a uh, go kit for it. I got the case at uh, Harbor Freight, and you can see I have uh, a power pole cable that runs it to a power supply. There's a USB cord in there. And what we all like to see, and this is all we really need to run for quite a while on this kit, is a little bio -ino battery. And this one is a uh, three amp hour. Is that a nine and, volt? Nine volt? Uh, uh, no, that is, that's a 12. Uh, but what I do is on the cable, I put uh, about three uh, 1N4001 diodes in series. And what that does, it drops that voltage down just fine uh, from about 13 volts coming out of that battery down to about 11. 
uh, or 10 and a half, which gets you your four or five watts out and works just fine and doesn't draw as heavy on the battery too. So, and of course, all those diodes help protect it against uh, being hooked up reverse and so forth. Um, the kit uh, is put out by QRP Labs. Now, when you saw that picture of Friedrichshofen, it says uh, Palm, um, um, and uh, he is taking over some of that uh, same guy. He lives in Turkey, and I think he's originally from the UK. Uh, he has a UK call sign. And these kits, I have to tell you, these are the future of kit building. And wow. they're a lot of fun. And like I said, I could take this and let's say I could go to a park and take a laptop and so on. And uh, what I'm looking for is a real small Windows tablet, uh, inexpensive and so forth. Doesn't have to be real fancy. And all I need to do is hook that... Uh, computer up to this, uh, give it the battery power, hook up an antenna, and guess what? We are on the air with any digital mode that you want, FT8, FT4, Whisper, and so forth. And uh, uh, to me, I when I saw this, I thought, oh, this sounds too good to be true. And I thought so until I built it, and it's wonderful. Yeah, Fantastic. I, I pulled up the website. It's sixty nine dollars for the kit, and I believe, like you said, it's another twenty for the enclosure. Which, by the way, the, the yeah. trick for the QRP labs, any of the radios they make, buy the buy the case. Yeah, uh, it, yeah. It's, <laughs> Just it's very don't, don't inexpensive, even... and it's yeah. it works. It's fit perfectly. It's designed to fit well, uh, so you don't have to. I almost killed Amanda. <laughs> she almost spit up her drink right now. <laughs> with that one. Like lesson learned. Like so many times, you're like, yeah, I'll find a thing that I yeah, can fit it never... in, and then you like regret your whole life decisions yep. after that. That's she right. Got it. Yeah. Same shit. And, and it it. Like I said, it works, it fits, it snaps together, and then you put the two covers on it, and everything they make uh, with those cases, that's that's what you want. You definitely want their case. I'm very intrigued by the, the Palm radio stuff. So those are the unobtainium CW keys that everybody wants and has wanted for a really long time. Are you saying that... It's potentially QRP Labs is picking them up and taking over. Possible. That's possible. Uh, that's that's what uh, was mentioned at four days in May. But wow, uh, fireworks just went uh, off everywhere. Calm down, yeah. everybody. But <laughs> uh, I can I can tell you that uh, I have one of the the micro uh, palms with my KX2 bag. And uh, with my KX3, I have a Begali adventure. And it's good to have a really good key with you when you're traveling or operating portable. I have a Palm Pico paddle, which is the... Maybe the, that's the one. The little Maybe that's tiny the guy. one. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah they're quite the, hard to get now. They're very expensive. They're like... Yeah. It's, yeah. it's only like that big, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it slides into the little case. In fact, I bought it. Uh, at their booth uh, at Friedrichshofen in 2014. All right. <laughs> well, I, I, nice. I got sidetracked because because Mike, thanks Mike for being on the show again. But he's also sent it. He he Joe got him all spun up talking about tablets and laptops. He just yeah. posted <laughs> an Evolve Three Maestro ebook laptop computer for sixty bucks. How that good? So wow. Cheap. How good can that be? That that can't be good. Really? Is it good, <laughs> Mike? Is it good? I don't know. I'll have to look that oh, one up. Where is it, Mike? How, is it good? Did you Probably just muted, have yeah. you? Do you have one? You might be muted. He's muted. I'll have to look that up. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll have to try that out. I I, I got to look. You at said that. was it Micro Center? I'll yeah, the link is in the. Uh, the I the I Skype mean, you chat. could at least run some logging software and check your email. And um, what else is important out in the field? When you're, uh, yeah, I I think that the uh, I think they stopped making them, but the the Microsoft Surface Go, which was five four hundred bucks, hundred with a with a keyboard attachment, that's about yeah, the that's, that's the most expensive. kind of, but it's it's a thin little tablety thing. It's it's very portable. That's the so that's the problem is that all of a sudden people will like show up and like put their drinks on it and like nah man that costs six hundred dollars. Don't stop. No touchy. Um, so, you know, I want something that it's, you wouldn't feel bad if it got hurt or dropped from a picnic table, those kind of things when you're out. That's what well, I think. Well, maybe but, I'll buy one of these and then I'll, uh, 
I'll tell please you. do a taster's test choice on. I'll, 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 I'll let you know. I mean, it's sixty please. bucks. I gotta try. It's normally one hundred and twenty nine. So yeah, I'll, I'll have to... to look because I may be down down near one of their stores in a couple of weeks. I'll have to take a look. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up here, everybody. Yeah. Uh, anything anybody wants to say to wrap things up? Go ahead. Take the floor. Oh, did um, I got nuts. That? Yeah, we do. We got to We got to mention that. But um, let me go around the circle. Gordo, thanks for being here tonight. You really have piqued people's interest in Thank the you, ISS Gordo. again. I think we're going to have to come back with some more lessons on how to work the International Space Station at any given time, not just during field day. But uh, stay tuned for that and maybe capturing SST uh, SSTV as well. A separate lesson, but the same. Uh, Joe, anything else? Nope. Uh, just enjoy uh, kit building. I've got a power supply kit that's next on my agenda, and we'll talk about that next time I'm on. Perfect. Mike, don't be a stranger. Come join us again sometime. Please do. Okay. Uh, me. Um, I got the nets. Yeah, we've got uh, 7192 for 40 and 14268 for 20, 14 Charlie for D star, 31012 for DMR. And hopefully everyone thinks our net controls for being here endlessly every week. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't really have a decision on the next show, but it's going to be standby, um, July 20th. And I was thinking of doing, uh, the youth on the air camp recap where we're going to have some youth that uh, participated and, uh, some things like that. And some VOA people to tell us how well it went. And I think we would love to hear from those kiddos. Um, very cool. Don, do you think, when do you think, um, do you, do you know this more than I do? When will the, um, young ham of the year award winner be announced? I don't know. I will be the first one to get the, uh, to get the news, but I, I won't know until they, uh, until, till pretty much, um, the press release comes out. Okay. So, so I'm guessing that's have, probably too soon before. Yeah. It's, we're, well, we were hoping, we were hoping to have it already. Um, but we've got like six judges and getting everybody all around the country. And sure. so getting everybody together on that stuff, it, uh, it does take time, but, um, they are working on it. I had one more thought. Um, that I thought about earlier when we were talking about um, 13 colonies. And this goes for not only 13 colonies, but if you're trying to make contact with any um, any any station over in Europe or someplace, any place else in the world, especially if you're trying to work a de-expedition or a special event station, remember that not every country has the same band allocations. Ah, uh, yes. Like 40 meters over in Europe is very narrow. Mm -hmm. So don't complain, you know, just take a look and, and keep in mind that they're operating within their rules in their country, not yours. So be patient, <laughs> be kind, be courteous, be gracious and say thank you and move on. There well, you sorry. go. That's easy enough. Or that they could be working split so they could listen yeah, up in your exactly. portion. That's right. Listen, and, listen and pay oh, attention gosh, and follow directions. There you go. If Pay they attention. say tune up, go up. That's right. Yeah. All listening right. up, listening up. That means they're working split. Find that little split button on your radio. Play nice. All right. Well said, Don. And thank you, everybody, for being on. I appreciate it. And we're out of here. So we'll see you we again are in two here. weeks. All right. 73, everybody. Three. All right. I'm going to buy this laptop. All Here right. we go. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not expecting a lot, <laughs> yeah, so stay you know tuned. What? This, it's, was this through Facebook? Because if it was a Facebook purchase, I mean, I don't even know what you're going to get. It might um, just actually be like... Trying to no, get this my, is, my corn. This is yeah, Micro got it, Center. Mike. They have a store like three hours from me in Kansas uh, City. I, I've never seen it, but it says Hi, it's not on display, but located in laptops. So you have to ask for it. <laughs> Josh, we, won't, we won't put it on the show floor because it's not any good.